Well, hello there, everyone. Fancy seeing you here, and welcome to episode 365 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilay's Live on YouTube. Gosh, it has been a little while, hasn't it? And that wasn't planned. A, 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 a brief break had been planned, but not one quite as long as uh, the, what this has turned out to be. Um, but we need to we need to get right back into the swing of things because unfortunately there's another break coming around the corner. But never mind, we won't talk about that one now. Thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording. The first comment for this one goes to Keith, who says good day. But Dave here as well, saying good afternoon from gloomy North London. I will send some sunshine your way then, because we haven't had too bad a day down here in the south. Although apparently we're going to have our fair share of gloom tomorrow. We are sentient. Says hello from Dublin. Um, <laughs> and also get straight into the subject of the first perfume we're going to be sm uh, smelling. Early morning greetings from Australia, says the alcoholic nun. <laughs> Hello from Germany, says Nick. Thank you very much, all of you, for tuning in. So for, for the benefit of, of those of you who watch regularly and who, you know, make a point of following each each and every episode, thank you very much for those of you who do. Um, Yes, a, a brief break had been planned. You may remember that I'd said that I was probably going to not be able to do videos for a couple of weeks. That was largely to do with the fact that this space, this room, was going to be out of action. And that, that did happen. But then I also got uh, quite poorly and it took me a, a little while to recover. But thank you very much to all of you who sent good wishes and, uh, and asked me how I was doing. That was really, really very, very, very kind and very much appreciated. But as I say, I want to get as many videos as possible done between now and the next time I've got to take a break. A couple of interviews uh, lined up as well. Uh, glad you're feeling better, Mr. P says, cloudy, so am I. Hello from Florida, says M. Glad to see you back. Hope you're well, Mr. P. I am much, much better than I was a couple of weeks ago. And, and what's the plan for today? Well, today I thought that I would just kind of ease myself back in and do a single longer video with a few... Uh, um, several new releases rather than single perfume episodes. Um, but maybe the next time we do a broadcast, which, fingers crossed, I don't want to jinx things, but maybe we might even be able to do some tomorrow. Perhaps I'll do single perfume once then. <clears throat> but okay, if you're able to stick around, then and then um, we should be together for the next hour or so. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. Uh, please click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos coming up. And if you would like to find out how you can support my work, you should be able to find, find a link. In fact, as I'm saying that, I'm thinking, actually, is the link there? I will need to check later, but there should be a link to my coffee page in the video description below. Okay, let us start with this long overdue review um, in some senses, but, but maybe kind of also on time because this officially, I believe, came out yesterday. This is latest from Acro. Now you will remember Acro is the brand set up by Olivier Cresp and his daughter Anaïs uh, a few years ago now, but um, uh, oh, uh, Multizorak says the link is there. Thank you very much. Um, this was the brand set up by Olivier Cresp and his daughter Anaïs a few years ago, and the whole idea behind these is that each perfume is meant to be somehow inspired either by a sin or a vice or an addiction, you get the idea, that sort of thing. Um, again, regular viewers will know that I was really, really, really taken with smoke, the one that is meant to be an addiction, I think, to smoking and cigarettes and tobacco. I have never, ever smoked in my life. In fact, I've been actually very, very anti-smoking, but I love that perfume. Last year, they gave us um, ink, which was a really fascinating metallic jasmine vetiver composition. I wore it all throughout the summer. Um, and now this year we have got bake. Now I have smelt this before, which is why I've been waiting desperately to be able to share it with you because this is another success for Monsieur Cresp. Um, Oh, Cloudy says, might have mentioned this already, but I blind bought Adorem and I'm really enjoying it. I'm so pleased. There are so many people who have got in touch with me to say that they've ordered. Now, what we're talking about here is the French magazine Ne, the one that does these publications here. Uh, they also have a perfume range called One Plus One, and their latest one is a beautiful, beautiful frankincense composition by Fabrice Pellegrin called Adorem. We have got something new from Monsieur Pellegrin in this episode. Anyway. Let's focus. So this is Bake from Acro. And as you can imagine, the vice here, the addiction is calories and cakes and baking. Now, 
Um, Monsieur Cresp has some form where gourmand fragrances are concerned because uh, a few decades ago he made a perfume that some of you may have heard of called Angel. Do you remember that one? Yes, it was it was a kind of minor hit. It, it, it stuck around for a few years and then it went away and nobody ever heard of it again. So he knows what he's doing when it, when it comes to gourmands. Um, but of course, the other side of this kind of equation that we need to consider is that gourmands, in in the kind of world of us fragrance geeks, they sometimes have a, a bad name, and people think, "Oh my goodness, I can't be, I can't be doing with uh, you know another sweet, sticky caramel concoction." Um, oh, Sharon, thank you very, very much. Um, oh, I didn't know this. Hang on, what's Sharon saying? With Luca Turin announcing his retirement from perfume writing, when did he do that? There are fewer and fewer resources for knowledgeable and comprehensive reviews. So thank you for what you do. Well, thank you very much for the super chat. That's really, really kind and agree. But I need to look at that's like you've you've shocked me. I I why has he done that? I wonder. Is he going to concentrate on um on his more scientific work? I'm I'm really shocked. I'm really shocked. And I hope he changes his mind and he announced it publicly on Twitter, says T. Um um, okay, well, yeah, we need to, we need to focus. We need, I will I will look out for his um, Twitter announcement. Well, I hope Tania Sanchez is still going to be doing something. Anyway, moving on. <clears throat> Let me spray this because wearing it and smelling it has made me consider what it is about Cresp that actually makes him so brilliant at doing gourmands. Okay, so this is this is uh, bake. <laughs> this is this is really really wonderful. It's so delicious. It's but see, Olivier Cresp has always said, he's always maintained that he is a figurative perfumer, by which he means, it's kind of different from how we use the word when we're talking, when we're doing like English, English literature criticism. Um, but what he means is that he tries to go for something that is photorealistic, that, that is an accurate representation of something that exists in the real world. So he's always said, for instance, don't ask me to make the perfume of stress but if you ask me to make the perfume of the smell of the inside of a you know crowded office then then he can do that and what you get here is actually i think one of the most photo real concoctions he has ever ever gifted us because if i were to close my eyes and smell this i would be 100% convinced seriously 100% convinced that right in front of my face is the most mouth-watering, delicious lemon meringue pie or lemon meringue tart. Yeah, it's probably a tart because he's French. And actually the pastry here, the pastry here smells as though it's, you know, of a high enough quality as supposed to be called a tart. There's, and, 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 and it's served, it's served with a helping of whipped cream and not just any whipped cream, but a really, really beautifully homemade Chantilly. So, you know, beautiful, the actual cream with some sugar in it. You've got the lemon zest, I think maybe with, with an addition of a sort of sprinkling of a little bit of lime, but it's not just lemon because you've also got the feeling of that kind of lemon curd with that eggy texture and a, a beautiful addition of sugar and something really, really, <laughs> Sorry, I've missed you guys. Herb says, I like to think I'm also of high enough quality to be called a tart. <laughs> Do you know, I, no, never mind. Actually, I'm not going to go there. What I used to be called when I was at university. Whoa, I can't take those few last seconds back now, can I? Because this is live. Anyway, forget it. We, we were not going there. Um, I've been called a perfume tart, though. Um, the, and 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 it's the pastry, it's the butteriness of it that it's is just so gorgeous because it feels like a really really beautiful sweet pastry with just the right amount of fat in it and just the right amount of sugar, and you can just imagine it melting in your mouth as you as you take your first bite of this of this beautifully beautifully done piece of work. I was so annoyed. The the, the London launch of this took place the other day and I couldn't go. Um, and the launch was at Cedric Grollet um, at one of the London hotels. Now, I've never tried anything from Monsieur Grollet, and a lot of people say that he's actually overrated, but it would have been interesting to try some of his wares within the context of an Olivier Cresp launch. I will have to go there one day. <clears throat> Your description is too evocative, says alcoholic nun. I'm salivating, but so am I. So am I. 
it 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 is it is it is almost like comically photoreal. And the first time I smelt this, I was with some perfume pals, some perfume friends, and we all sort of looked at each other and went, "What the heck has this guy done? He has really, really convinced us that this lemon meringue tart is right under our noses." Um, and but 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 kind of putting aside all of this excitement, the geeky side of me. So let me label this blotter actually, because um, we will have to do a blotter update. <clears throat> the geeky side of me thinks, okay, so why is it that I am so taken with this gourmand, and yet so many of the ones um, really really make my stomach turn. And 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 I think I think it's a couple of things that and 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 if you have any views to share on this, I'd be very very interested to hear them. But I, th I think it's a couple of things. P putting aside the fact that also Olivier Crespe can really make things come across as hyper realistic, you know, holographically realistic. But le let's put that aside because th that's kind of a given in a way with 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 his work. But I think one thing that he's very very clever at is actually balancing. Um, the the sweetness and he is not afraid he, he doesn't shy away from putting in really quite sharp tart notes he knows exactly how much sharpness and how much acidity to put into that because of course that's also what you want from a lemon meringue right i remember a few weeks ago i had one somewhere locally and and I have to say, I thought I thought I, I was in company and thought and I thought, OK, well, I'll have most of it because it's going to seem rude if I if I leave it. But I thought it was pretty awful because it was just sugar, 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 sugar. And and you expect the meringue to be sweet, although it's kind of OK, because it's always it should also be really light. I have no idea why this is turning into a cookery channel, but bear with me. Um, <clears throat> but the lemon, um, the lemon curd side of this particular one as well was just was just all sugar rather than lemon and, and so it didn't work it was just a great big blur okay then the, the, that's a technical term here you get the sugar you get the sweetness you get the creaminess you get the butteriness but the acidity is just spot on it's yellow it's sharp it's got that you know that that mouth sucking tongue sucking quality um and so i think that's one reason why it works what why he knows what he's you know he knows what he's doing but another thing is that um, he pays a lot of attention to making sure that the heart of the perfume, the core of the perfume works and is realistic, but he never ever forgets, and this may sound like a stupid thing to say, but and yet so many perfumers do forget this, he never forgets that what he is making is a perfume, i.e. something that needs to be worn on skin and something that needs to connect to skin, something that needs to have a bridge between its heart, between its, you know, figurative, whatever it is representing, and the skin. And so whatever is in the base, the musks, the vanilla, actually just lay on the skin really, really beautifully. Pradeep says, is it good through the dry down? Yes, I think it is. It doesn't stay completely lemony all the way through the dry down, but in the dry down, it's warm and snuggly and snuzzly and biscuity and moorish and very, very satisfying. You know, it's like the feeling of having had a really gorgeous dessert. It's it's wonderful. It really works. And I asked Madame Perselace to smell it on me because I wore it today um, after it had been on for a couple of hours. I think it was on my it was on my left arm. And she did that thing. That, I know means that she likes the perfume. It was it was this real kind of purr of ooh, and she the first word that came to her mind was that it's warm. So you get that 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 oven warmth. It's 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 very very clever. I have a, I have a a brief press release. <clears throat> so it says here introducing Bake, the latest temptation from Acro Fragrances. Uh, thanks to and it it's got a little bit of a. Um, general introduction about the brand. Let's go straight to the scent. At Acro, we don't have a lot of restraint. The temptations of everyday life are at the heart of what we do and continue to inspire new scents and ideas. One of the aromas of modern life we found most alluring is that of bakeries and cake shops. Doesn't everybody? The scent of fresh pastry and sticky sugar, brightening up the most humdrum of days. <clears throat> Um, bake is a fascinating scent made up of tart lemon notes, followed by sweet vanilla and rich nutty praline. Yes, we haven't said anything about, about the praline. It's so good, 
you might not even need that cupcake or extra patisserie. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. We, we always need the extra cupcake. And the official notes here are lemon peel and rum. See, okay, now maybe that's that kind of sharp woodiness. But I didn't I didn't think I didn't think booziness actually when I smelt it. And then chantilly and praline, brown sugar and vanilla. Uh, Acro has pushed fragrance beyond established norms in building this initial connection. Olivier Cresp experimented with over a thousand fragrant combinations. As Acro expands, he will continue to innovate and invigorate with Anais as the compass for cool. Acro is original, always intriguing, sometimes polarizing, never predictable. Now, somewhere in one of the official um, press bits, I haven't got this here, they also said that um, this was partly inspired by I think a cake shop somewhere in Camden, and somebody will tell me what it's called, something doilies, or but I haven't been to it, I haven't been to it, but somebody will help me out. Uh, what are you saying about it? Uh, it doesn't seem like a summer frag, says Filippo. Well, why not? I'm, it probably tastes really, really Moorish on your skin in the summer. Are there savoury gourmands you can think of? The closest one in recent memory for me would be Basilica from Milano Fragrance, says Woozy. There are a few out there, but it's funny, we tend not to use that term when they're savoury, even though, strictly speaking, I should, suppose we should. Oh, Cynthia, thank you, thank you very much. Crumbs and doilies, not crumbs and soilies. <laughs> that would be some <laughs> different kind of place. I'm glad he's turned his wizardry to something delicious, says Cynthia. A uh, nice T-shirt says Musk in Heaven. Thank you very much. It's very very kind. So we're off. We're off to a really really delicious start. Let's pop that on here. Um, the blue dye in your shirt is a beautiful colour. Um, being serious and I am straight says you don't have to kind of caveat that it's okay for people to compliment each other. Um, did they used to call that duster blue? Don't remember. I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea. But you know what? As I'm seeing it on the screen because colour rep uh, reproduction isn't always accurate, right? It looks sort of darker, I think, in real life than it does over there in the monitor in front of me. But we should move on, because I have been rabbiting on for 17 minutes, and we have only done one perfume. Can I also just say, and I keep telling myself I need to get better at this, if you are enjoying this video and you're watching it and you're enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up, because that really helps. Okay, let's go to one that I genuinely haven't smelt before in the true spirit of Love at First Scent. And it is this, okay? Brand new from Aqua di Palma. This is another addition to their La Spugnatura range. Uh, and I wasn't sure there was going to be another edition, actually. Uh, you may remember, when was it? Uh, a couple of years ago? I, th I think it was a couple of years ago. They did a limited edi edition of their Bergamot, which they called... Um, what was it? Bergamotto di Cal no, Blue Mediterraneo, Bergamotto di Calabria, La Spugnatura. And I think they thought that really was a bit of a mouthful, which is why this one is just Blue Mediterraneo, Arancia, La Spugnatura. La Spugnatura, and you ought to watch, I'll try and remember to link to it. <clears throat> but um, I did an interview with the creative director at Aqua di Palma, where she actually explained what the thinking was. Um, I really enjoyed that interview. She was fascinating to listen. I'd, I'd have her back on, actually, um, where she explained what the thinking uh, was behind that scent and also talked about the spugnatura um, extraction method. But it, it, it's, it's essentially to do with running a sponge across the citrus peel and then and then squeezing the oil out of the sponge. Spugnatura, uh, I think, uh, I believe in Italian has, has got some kind of, something in that word means sponge, right? Um, I really, really liked their take on the bergamot, even though it had uh, a noticeable dose of woody ambers, but I thought they were quite well done in that one. And so now they have extended the range with uh, their orange. And I haven't smelt it, and I believe it came out couple of weeks ago, maybe less than a couple of weeks ago. So let us see what this is going to be like. Um, I always enjoy wearing uh, the the blue Mediterraneos when the when the weather starts getting a little bit warmer. My favourite probably remains the Quinotto, Quinotto di Liguria, and I never ever want to be without a bottle of Quinotto, and I've got plenty at the moment. But but the orange, the orange is is good fun as well. Now I wonder if they've done what the bottle, yes they have, because they put, they put the, um, bergamot into a sort of decorated ceramic bottle. I think that's really, really fetching. And do you like how I planned the, the outfit with, with the bottle? 
there we are. How can I show that off to you? They do, they do very, very often do very pretty bottles at Aquity Palm, and there's always some kind of pretty limited edition or other. But let us smell the juice. Okay. Always exciting when there's something we genuinely haven't tried before. There is a press release, but I haven't read it. I have no idea in what way this is meant to be different from the original Arancha. I suspect all will be revealed in a moment. Okay. <clears throat> oh, not what I was expecting. Okay, my initial thought, not what I was expecting at all, because I, I think maybe I thought it would be more overtly orangey, but maybe it would be a bit silly doing that because then everybody could just go and get the orange, right? Could get the arancha. Um, my initial thought is that this is actually like their classic cologne, but with a more pronounced orange note, which is no bad thing because I do love their classic cologne. It remains one of the most elegant, most chic, understated, and yet slightly, just ever so slightly sassy colognes that you can get. Um, so what is it that's making me think of the cologne? What I love about the Aqua de Palma cologne, and, and here I'm talking about like, you know, the original cologne, because there's also what, there's the the the, the Ascensa and the Intensa, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what I love about it is that very, very gently, soapy, slightly powdery quality that it has in the dry down. And this seems to project that straight away, that real Italian chic of, you know, um, this is going to be a very idiosyncratic reference, but maybe not. I happen to have, because of because of some of Madame Persilaise's friends, over the years, I happen to have stayed at several Italian convents, okay? Or at least in the guest accommodation of several Italian convents. Um, Italian nuns, by the way, are always a hoot and, and great fun to be with, I have to say. Um, and there's something, there's something beautifully vintage and old fashioned about the smell of the hospitality in those places because all of the sheets are starched and all of the towels are really, really crisp and the soaps are always those old fashioned, you know, sort of like Florentine soaps, maybe something irisy. And that to me is the smell of a truly Italian hotel or guest house. Um, and that's what's coming across here with an inflection of a gentle, not too sharp, not too sweet, nicely balanced orange note. So I guess maybe I thought this would be a little bit zingier, a little bit more colourful, a little bit, a little bit more joyous, whereas actually it's going more towards the sophisticated Italian gent. Um, how can you not explain why she knows nuns, says Marx? Well, it's not that I can't. It's just it's just in her professional life uh, because um, she she she's an educator as well, and in her time she's worked in lots and lots of establishments that have been um, linked to convents. And actually, years and years ago, she she volunteered and did some volunteer work at a convent as well. So that's why she happens to know a lot of nuns. Um, she's an exorcist, says her. No, she's not. <laughs> I'm so glad she never watches these videos. Um, been to a monastery with monks, but they did not smell so good, says Yoshi. Yeah, that I can believe somehow. And going back to the theme of baking, nuns baking is some of the best. You are so right. And I don't know, I don't know whether it, you know, at the convent they're taught how to make good pastry because so many of them, and actually not just the other week, I was given some amazing marmalade by some nuns in London. So there you go. You all need to make friends with nuns because they're the best cooks. Right, let me see if I can find um, the press release. Oh, you can tell I haven't done these videos for a while. Um, okay, where are we? We did have a press release, and it's a little bit on the lengthy side, but I, I won't read all of it. From an ancient and exquisite artisanal extraction technique comes a rare and precious citrus essence, the heart of a vivacious and multifaceted composition. Traditionally used only to obtain... The most precious essence from bergamot fruits, La Spugnatura, is an antique extraction method practiced by a few artisans in Italy. True to Acqua di Parma's DNA of being inspired by its heritage to create contemporary interpretations, the Maison explores the age-old technique on a different citrus fruit, Arancia Vanilla, 
to craft a new limited edition scent. <clears throat> the starring fruit of the city of oranges, Ribera, in Sicily. Ah, interesting. The Arancia Vanilla name alludes to the perfect olfactive oxymoron, where its contrasting olfactive properties intersect the freshness of oranges with the alluring softness of vanilla. A bittersweet symphony that unfolds a surprising olfactive experience. Okay. I'm not getting anything like overtly vanillic. Um, a project long nurtured by the Maison, which has always worked to preserve the oldest and most valuable artisanal processes, it is here in Italy where very few artisans in the world still practice the ancient sponging technique. A fascinating traditional expertise which sees an entirely manual extraction of the citrus essence, a true art that requires time and skillful, precise, delicate gestures. I would love to see them doing it, actually. The artisan, cuts each fruit in two equal halves with a well-sharpened knife. Then, using a utensil in the shape of a spoon named cavatore, he separates the skin from the pulp. Immediately after, the orange rinds are manually pressed on sea sponges, which absorb all the essence. In the final phase, the artisan squeezes the sponges full of essential oil with precise movements into a terracotta container to collect the rich citrus elixir. The limited production capacity that depends on entirely on manual processes gives rise to the ingredients scarcity. Only 300 grams of essence is extracted from approximately 100 kilos of fruit. I love these ratios, and, and, and I'm sure it's true. I'm sure they're not exaggerating. And two artisans can work through a volume equaling 300 kilos of fruit in a day. Gosh, so in a day, they'll only get 300 grams of the oil. Subsequently, the supply chain uses all other components of the orange fruit for various purposes without generating any waste. Uh, the sponge, malleable and soft when in contact with the rind, preserves all the facets of the fruit, and it is this unique sillage that distinguishes the elixir that gives life to Arancha la Spugnatura. So what is it? Uh, what are they going to tell us actually about the scent? Arancia la Spugnatura is the maximum expression of this distinctive ingredient in all its depth and richness. Joyful, luminous, and embracing, it's a fragrance that splendidly surprises like the glorious rays of the Italian sun. The initial burst of citrus notes brings contrasts, as does the Arancia Vanilla, which combines the freshness typical of citrus fruits with a degree of softness and roundness, a contrast which is also found in the yellow mandarin versus the bitter almond, which adds a bittersweet touch. Finally, uh, black pepper adds a touch of texture and brilliance. Oh, and I've just seen what's coming up. This is interesting. This is a kind of a first for uh, an Aqua de Palma press release. Created by master perfumer François Demachy, the composition is an equilibrium of contrasts that unfolds a surprising olfactive experience. Then there's a little bit about um, the bottle, which we don't particularly need to read. Okay, pepper I didn't particularly get. Almond, yes, fine, but I'm still thinking that this is like the cologne with more orange. And as I say, that is um, that is no that is no bad thing. But we need to move on. Uh, and I should say at nearly the half hour mark that you're watching episode 365 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilays. Thank you very much indeed for tuning in. If you, whether, regardless of whether you're watching the live or the recording, please feel free to uh, leave a comment, ask a question. And if you're enjoying the video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up. And I think we need to move on because there are a couple of other things I would like to share with you. Now, this is again, one that I have smelt before, but I've been waiting, waiting, waiting for the opportunity to share it with you. And again, I think this is one that maybe came out yesterday or a couple of days ago. I was so excited when I first smelled this a little while ago now. Um, this is from a brand that seems to be going through a, 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 a good phase. They're having they're having a strong streak at the moment. It's Diptyque, and it's their latest EDP. Can you see that there? Called um, O Nabati, composed by Fabri uh, Fabrice Pellegrin. Um, he, Fabrice Pellegrin most recently gave us from the same brand, Lo Papier, which I was really taken with, but worlds apart from this one, Le Papier was a really, really intriguing take on the kind of vanillic, cedary, sesame-like qualities of paper. This is, well, let's unwrap it. You've missed it, haven't you? When I first smelt this, I thought, oh, 
I wonder if Fabrice Pellegrin has been raiding his archive cupboard. Um, and, and, and perfumers do do this, you know, it's, it's a way of finding inspiration from the, from the past is, is, is not at all unusual. Oh, hang on, have I got this upside down? Um, they'll look at an old perfume and they'll think, um, oh, I wonder, you know, if I did this and that to it, would it work? But, but this is pure speculation on my part as well. Although if I ever meet him again, I will be asking him whether he went for this particular perfume as, as his starting point. And I will tell you in a second which one I'm referring to, but I just need to do a little bit of arranging here. So there's the bottle for O Nabati. What's the trick that Max does to make things come into focus? Okay. <clears throat> I'm not sure this is here in the US, says Cynthia. Oh, as far as I know, it's not any kind of a sort of limited distribution one. So maybe it's just going to take a little while um, to get to you. Okay, can you see that there? Right, here we go. Oh, Nabati, there is a press release for this as well. Yeah, and... It's making me think the same thing I thought when I smelt it. Because to me, there is more than a ghost here of uh, Dune, of Dior's Dune. Um, but it's not. So, OK, so what does that mean? Because if you haven't smelt Dune or if you don't remember Dune, that doesn't mean very much to you. It's It starts off with a kind of green, sweet, amber beginning. Dune is part of quite a small subset of green ambery perfumes. There aren't very many green ambers out there. I don't know whether it's because they're seen as being a little bit challenging, a bit of a tough sell. Um, the Obsession, Calvin Klein Obsession kind of had that sort of green ambery thing to it as well. Uh, maybe something like Must de Cartier you could put in that category as well, possibly uh, Chanel's Allure, um, but there aren't many out there. Um, and Dune does then go off into, you know, a slightly more kind of marine territories. This one doesn't so much, but it's got that it's got that kind of sand-like quality, that beige sand-like quality that I've always, always, always loved about Dune. That's here as well. And it, it's so, so difficult to describe. If you, ha if you haven't smelt it, it's, it, it, it's a very, very haunting piece of work, somehow very, very romantic. You know, you, you're kind of thinking of beautiful people wreathed in diaphanous clothes, you know, lounging in courtyards with fountains and trying to find shade from the sun and, you know, reaching for another piece of Turkish delight. It, it, it's got it's got all of those sorts of associations to it. Um, and, 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 and you are surrounded within this setting, you are also surrounded by lots and lots of blades of freshly cut grass, which just kind of help to cut through what may have been otherwise a, a slightly too oppressive an atmosphere. And I'm, I'm really taken with this, really, really taken with this, because to me it is like a sort of modern update on Dune, and I guess what makes it a bit more modern is that it's, bearing in mind that I don't think Dune particularly itself needs updating, because I think it's stunning, but it's it's a bit lighter, it's a bit more sheer, it's a bit more translucent, perhaps a bit less strange and a bit more approachable. Let's leave that on here for a sec. Uh, Amina says Nabati means plant-based in Arabic, but maybe that has no relationship to it. Now, I don't know. See, Nabot, I thought always thought in Farsi meant a particular type of sort of sugar or sweet. Um, but but let's find out from the press release. Maybe we are going to be given an explanation of uh, what the name means. <clears throat> so, O Nabati from Diptyque, a salute to the luxuriant gardens in which Diptyque's much-traveled founders, Desmond Knoxleet, Christiane Montadre-Gautreau, and Yves Quaslon loved to take a break 
and savor the myriad delights and vibrant beauty of their surroundings. Nature, uh, be it wild or tamed, was the original creative catalyst for this trio, the dearly cherished raw material for the Maison's olfactory creations, a living, fertile force that captivated their imaginations, inspiring the narratives associated with each fragrance. The garden was their favorite playing field, the ultimate union of art, botany, and architecture, a permanent source of enchantment. Um, oh, Milad says Nabot in Far Farsi means vegetation and herbs. Okay, well, I've misremembered that then. Oh, Nabati is the latest incarnation of that enchantment. It's a garden of dreams, a garden glimpsed in dreams a small island of multifaceted scents, of golden rays of light that bring out the richness of the vegetation, play upon the waters of the pools, and accentuate the motifs in the geometrical compositions assembled from a multitude of colored earthenware tiles. So I suppose maybe it's all to do with greenery and nature. Um, let's see a bit more. Okay, this is a bit about the perfume. Eau Nabati is an eau de parfum developed by Fabrice Pellegrin and conjuring up images of a wondrous oasis in the middle of the vastness of the desert, between hot sand and the welcome freshness of trees and clear water. The striking contrast, suggestive of a mirage, is made possible by the compositional balance of this amber perfume. So there you go, desert, amber. Hmm. Um, the fresh green qualities of uh, bergamot, Oh, thank you very much. Alcoholic Nun says rock candy is called Nabot in Iran too. That must have been what I was thinking because you can put that in your tea. Anyway, the fresh green qualities of bergamot here given added zest by Petit Grain are enveloped in notes of immortelle flowers, rounded, warm and amber, evoking hot desert sands. That could well be the warmth, the heat. And uh, Peru balsam, hot and cold united in a single perfume. The harmonious blending of opposing elements is also reflected in the landscape that illustrates this fragrance, engraved on the two golden metal ovals of the bottle. Coralie, a French artist whose graphic compositions draw inspiration from the symmetry found in nature, conceived these illustrations as a path for others to follow. <clears throat> etc. etc. And I wonder if that's going to be it actually. Yes, and a rather fetching image there. So there we've got some of the key elements. And I think, oh, there's the ring light as well. Oh, there's no other way of doing it. You can see that though, can't you? So you've got the immortel, you've got the grass, you've got the bergamot, and you've got those sorts of greens and blues, but maybe a bit less desert. Maybe they thought that the, the, the desert would be a little bit off-putting here. But um, whatever, whatever the photo is, I'm really, really taken with this. And I'm going to be giving... I'm going to try the bottle on Madame Persolais and I'm not going to tell her that it has a green opening because she doesn't handle green. So let's see what she thinks of it. Um, but yeah, this is this is this is this is another good one, another good one in 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 what is a good um phase for diptyque. Does it lean mature? says Dee Dee. Very curious about this one. Oh, I never know what that means. I mean, if you're thinking, you know, does it make me think like it would be more suitable for an older person? Not necessarily, because it's because it's 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 like I said, it's sheer and light and translucent. Um, but there's also something there's something slow about it, you know. Because I suppose in the heat, I mean, it's it's not kind of like silly, dippy, crazy, energetically youthful. It's there's something about it that's introspective. Um, the design of so many Middle Eastern houses, right, is is that they are, or traditional Middle Eastern houses, is that they are they're they're, they're all focused on an internal courtyard, um, and that in itself, I think, brings a kind of introspection, a sort of inward lookingness. So you've got the outside world, you've got the sky, you've got your garden, you've got your trees and plants or whatever, but but it, it but they're inside your house, and it, I think it's got that kind of enclosed quality to it, and. The, the that the motif which I can't show you here, but you you can you kind of make that out. I wonder if I can get it to focus on that. I don't know how to. I don't think my my camera will do that. But the motif is of a sort of fountain or a mirage, and and a, and a mirage is like a kind of haven, a bubble in a desert, and it's got that sort of feel to it. Um, so I don't know if um, that answers your question. 
Okay, Milad says, thank you, Mr. P. It's such a treat to watch your streams. It is a treat to be able to do them. I can tell you that. I'm very, very grateful to be able to do them and very, very grateful for your company and, and being able to, uh, to, you know, to, to share this time with you. Um, time is ticking. I would like to show you something else. This is a brand that I think I've written about, but I'm not sure I've mentioned them uh, mentioned it here on YouTube before, but I, I could be wrong, you know, 365 episodes. The brand is Alexandra J. And I think in the UK, they're available only at Harrods. And it, it, they're very, very classic compositions, very, very traditional, uh, perhaps not, um, you know, sort of particularly edgy or crazily innovative. But but most of the stuff from them, I think, is very, very good work. And I, and, I, and I keep wishing that I had more time to bring it to your attention. But they've just released something new. And I thought, OK, perfect timing. Because is it some of their scents or all of their scents? It's certainly a good number of their scents have now just been released as extraits. And again, in the UK, they're available at Harrods. And you know that I don't particularly bother about packaging. Um, but the packaging of this is, is so beautiful. And also the price point, because when I checked, I went onto the Harrods website to actually see how much these are. And of course, I've had to lose the page now. Oh, no, here we go. One of these extras is £240, which is a lot of money. Of course, it's a lot of money. But it's for 25 mils of extra, which I think actually makes it... Um, more affordable or at least on a par with like a Chanel extra because I, I can't remember but I think um I think Chanel extra is 15 mils of a Chanel is is not far off 240 pounds now and Garlin extra is a pretty pricey as well but let me let me try and show you this because this is this is you know for those of you who do enjoy a bit of presentation this is stunning so you've got a very very attractive box okay and you open it and then, you know, I love I love touches like this, you know, with a sort of front bit that falls open and uh, one of those sort of soft cloths for cleaning your spectacles. And then you've got an inner sort of um, padded box. So there you go. There's that one. And then that opens. Um, and then within that, you have got... I, th I, th I think this is so pretty. I think it's really, really pretty. And I love the fact that it's got sort of old world charm about it. And there's something, you know, there's something really maximalist about it. There's no minimalism here at all, which gets my complete approval. And this is the 25 mil spray bottle of extra. And each of the extras has got a sort of motif on the front, which is related to the perfume. So this is Black Beetle. And you should be able to make out there that there is a beetle over there on the front. Uh, they've done one for Imperial Peacock. They've done one for Ode to Rose. Perhaps I'll show you that one in a second as well. This is getting a little bit busy here, so let's move these aside. Um, <clears throat> and they're very, very, very attractive pieces of work as well. Classy Indeed says Musk in Heaven. So Pretty says M. Um, beautiful says Mona. I'm glad you agree. These are, they're just, I, I don't know. I When I display my perfumes, I want something that has really gone to town. Um, Let's have a spray of this one. So this is Black Beetle Extra. They are essentially the same as the EDPs, but I think with, you know, maybe slightly different emphasis in certain areas. So if I pop that there, will you still be able to see that? Yes, I think you can still make that out. Okay. I like small bottles, says Musk in Heaven. Seems more classy. Yes, and, and you know, imagine kind of like pulling that out and having a spray of that. Ah, see now, I, I like black. I can't ever remember which is my favourite from this range, but I but I like black beetle, um, because it's 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 kind of very very traditionally ambery, very vanillic, uh, labdenomy, you know, sort of resinous, um, but also there's something there's something camphoraceous at the top, almost medicinal, which just kind of breaks through that, um, and maybe it's meant to be like the kind of gleam, and this is just me making this up now, you know, the, the, the gleam of the, the blackness of the beetle's back, you know, because the beetles are actually really quite kind of enticing insects, aren't they? They're, there's something something dangerous looking about them, but also really something quite beautiful about them, their sheen and their, 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 of the blackness. Um, and and that, that quality is captured here as well. There's a powderiness about it that feels quite 
quite vintage. A lot of the scents in this range have a kind of old world vintage feel, which goes with the aesthetic. It goes with the presentation. Um, what can I tell you? It says French perfume label Alexandra J flexes its olfactive prowess to create scents that are truly and exceptionally unique. Inspired by the delicate and intricate representation of beetles in Art Nouveau, uh, Art Nouveau jewelry, the black beetle perfume extract opens with a wonderful contrast between refreshing notes of elemi and tonka bean and the depth of incense. Yes, actually, I don't know why I didn't think of that. Before drying down to reveal the spicy allure of chili, patchouli and musk. And it's, yeah, maybe maybe that medicinal quality actually is the spiciness that I'm getting. It's a, a, It really, really works. It really works. And, and there is something as I say, old world classy about it. And while we've got a minute, let's actually also do Ode to Rose, because I've got that here too. So let's just do the let's just do the unpacking here. So again, same box, but I'll show you what the motif is um, on the front of that bottle. So here's another one, and this one has got um, a very, very, very sort of heavily stylized rose. So, oh, can you see that there? I can probably just about make it out. Uh, let's have a spray of this one. Quite a few people um, tuning in at the moment. You're very, very welcome, by the way. So this is another extrait. Let's pop that one next to the deep teak so that they don't get lonely. Um, okay. <clears throat> And yes, this is, you know, as I say, they don't necessarily reinvent the wheel, but I don't actually think they're even trying to. It's a beautiful, really, really high quality rose, which is veering towards the kind of creamy side. It's pink. It's unashamedly feminine. Um, Maybe a little bit leafy as well. Let's see what they actually what, what the, the brand itself says. If I can quickly find some information about it. Uh, what's it called? This one, what did I say it was called? Ode to Rose. Let's have a quick, quick, quick search. I didn't think I'd have time to share both of them with you, which is why I haven't prepared the material. But it should come up any second. Here we go. So this one is also £240. And for this one, they say, uh, inspired by Art Nouveau's recurring theme of nature, the Ode to Rose perfume extract is beautifully blended with floral notes of ylang ylang, jasmine and rose, while its woody, earthy base of sandalwood and patchouli ensures it's punctuated with a distinctly sensual allure. Okay, so ylang ylang, jasmine, rose, patchouli is, is not exactly, like I said, you know, the, the, most, the most innovative combo, but when it's done well, you can see why it's been around with us for as long as it has, because it's just so effortlessly romantic. There's something <clears throat> something very Ophelia-like about this one, I think. So let's label that one as well. Hmm. Okay, so I think we can say that we are done. There was one more that I had saved here, but I think I want to have a little bit more time with that one. So I think perhaps we'll call it a day. Mr. Persolais, uh, do you intend to review Jacques Faf, Lyris de Faf, but the EDP version, which they've just released? If I can get hold of it, yes, I'd certainly be very, very interested. Let's have another sniff of the blotter so far, and I promise I will try to do a blotter update tomorrow. So we started with the Acro, which is just just irresistible. It's now it's now real real pastry and chantilly, but with with that lemon still hovering there in the background. The Aqua de Palma, yeah, the Aqua de Palma is perhaps in a way the most surprising, because it's it's less orange and more gentle, kind of soapy, musky woodiness. Um. I mean, I think if you want your orange hit, you'd want to go to the original Blue Mediterraneo Arancha, but you know, that's okay. As I say, the two are meant to exist together, aren't they? Then there's O Nabati um, from Diptyque. Uh, you know what it actually is? It's like a less sad dune. It, a, 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 but I also don't want to say happy because it's not particularly, but a more content, a more content dune. Yes. And we just did Black Beetle. Mm. 
really, really classy stuff. And Ode to Rose, also really nicely done rose, very honeyed, very, very kind of syrupy and textured. Okay, we have resumed our broadcasts. Thank you very much for being so patient. As I say, thank you very much for all of the good wishes and the support while I was feeling slightly under the weather. And thank you very much for watching and commenting. And please stay tuned to social media for details of the next broadcasts coming your way soon. And until then, be good, take care, and keep smelling fantastic. Okay, see you soon. Bye now.